Hi, how you doing? This is Chikudu. Welcome to Stand There For. Today we're going to look at the shield of faith. It's part of the defensive armor in that um, Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to look at faith and how faith is so critical and important to your getting your miracle. Join me at the studio. Hi, Hi. <laughs> I'm Chikudu. Welcome to Stand There For. And like I told you, today we're going to be talking about the shield of faith. You know, when Paul started that discourse in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, he said something important. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That tells us something, that this warfare is not a warfare that we are going to be engaged in with our might. Let me take this off. It's not going to be a warfare that we'll be engaged in with our own strength. No. That's why he said, in the Lord and in the power of his might. Very, very, very important that we know that. Secondly, in verse 11, he now said, put on the whole armor. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That means we have to put this armor on. We have to put it on. We have to put it on. It's not um, what we have automatically. We have to put it on. That means there must be a concerted effort to put it on it doesn't just come on automatically but you have to put it on yeah some of it has been imputed to us because we believe in christ but we have to appropriate it like this shield of faith needs to be appropriated he now said in the next verse verse 12 he said for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities still listing out all the different categories of spiritual wickedness. That tells me something. We are not fighting a battle against physical entities. No. We are engaged in a battle against spiritual entities. So using physical things cannot work against them. I've seen people go to bed because they are afraid of having nightmares or something. They put the Bible under their pillow. The physical Bible will do nothing for you if you don't have the word encoded in your heart. I'm really sorry to disappoint you. It will do nothing for you. In that in verse 16 of our text, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith we will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Fiery darts. If I get to that, see what he said. He said, above all, remember we've looked at the belt of truth. We've looked at the breastplate of righteousness. We've shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now he's saying, above all, above all, we should take the shield of faith that we might quench the fiery darts of the enemy. What are those fiery darts of the enemy? Remember, those darts are what the enemy uses to as an onslaught on us and the bible here tells us that they are fired as that and i told you that our enemy is not physical means that his weaponry against us is supernatural or rather it is something you cannot touch that is why the key onslaught of the enemy against christians are thoughts he fires thoughts into our minds those are the fiery darts. Thoughts of doubt, fear, worry, disbelief, and etc. I mean, he paints pictures of a future you don't want. Let's assume you felt pain in your leg. The next thing that you imagine, I usually think you're the one imagining it, is something so severe and worse. You imagine something, I mean, you, you, you could just see yourself with 
uh, a broken leg or walking in crutches or something. You just felt a little pain. You just see yourself on a wheelchair. You're wondering, and that thought goes like, mm, you just, you you will soon end up in a wheelchair. You will soon start walking about with crutches and all that. Where are those thoughts coming from? I ever wondered about it. You know, many of us think that those thoughts is actually us thinking them. It is not you. Those are the fiery darts of the enemy. No one will want to see himself sick. You won't think on your own bad thoughts about you. They are fired into your mind by the enemy. That is how he engages us in battle. The word there in Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. That word wrestle is talking about throwing down. That is why in those days, our traditional wrestling has to do with throwing somebody down. The person that is thrown down has lost that battle. So we wrestle now. That means we are trying to throw down, not Satan per se, but his wiles, the fiery that, that are fired into our minds. And you will notice I keep saying battle. Battles make up a war. Wars don't make up a battle. I'm going to explain that. When you fight a war, you will have pockets of battles at different times and different places. This war against the enemy has been fought and won by Jesus Christ. But as soldiers of Christ in our daily life, in pursuance of our purpose, destiny, desires, wants, and etc. We will have pockets of battles we need to fight individually. But as you fight those battles, there is something you need to know for sure. The war is won. Totally. It is a fixed fight and the enemy is the loser. He has been confirmed the loser. He will remain the loser. That is why we need to put him in his place. So whenever we are faced with our own personal battle, Enforce Christ's victory over him and he will bow down to you. That being said, we need to move on. When you watch a Roman soldier fight or, you know, the military of the old and they have this shield, the shield is actively involved in the warfare. The shield is actively involved in the fight. Why? They use it to, to ward off arrows, swords, spears, whatever that is thrown at them. So you can't have the shield and you're fighting and you leave it dormant. If you're fighting with your sword or with your spear, you can't have the shield dormant. It must be in a position that will protect you. And this scripture was written during the time of the Romans. And the Romans are characterized for having this big shield that is curved, very big, that can cover, I mean, the topmost part of a man. You know, maybe apart from your legs, but it is really, really long, wide, and curved. You know, it takes the shape to cover your body, and they use it actively and all that to ward off any attack of them. So, this shield is faith for us. So, that means we need to actively use your faith to ward off every thought that the enemy throws at you. So, when those thoughts come, just don't dismiss it because it won't go. Even if it goes to come back again, you need to actively use your faith against it. Faith is expressed through word. The Bible actively talks about the profession of faith, the confession of faith. So you need to use it actively. You speak. Once the thought comes, you must speak. Anytime you speak, you stop thinking. So, how you actively combat thoughts is by speaking. Is it speaking your own words? No. It's declaring to that demon that has brought that thought what God's word has said about that situation. Another way you do that, or another way you combat thoughts, is to take action steps of faith contrary to that negative thought. 
the thought of fear, doubt, worry, anxiety. Get up. Do something that counters that stuff. You felt that pain. The natural reaction is to sit down and brood over the pain. But when you feel that pain, stick out your leg, stretch it, stand up, walk, command that pain to go. As you speak to it in the name of Jesus, as you take action steps of faith, walking despite the pain, before you know it, your reality will align with your confession. And I've seen this happen in a lot of instances in my life and people have also testified that have practiced this that it also happened to them that they as they take the action set of faith and they keep taking that action set of faith they forget or they rather they cannot pinpoint the moment where that pain left it is after a while do not remember oh that pain has gone why as you take action steps of faith you forget your problem <laughs> Because it is your thinking and brooding over that problem that prolongs the problem and makes it severe. When you give no thought to it, that's why Jesus said, give no thought on what to eat, drink, and what you wear. When you give no thought to it and you continue walking as if, and you carry on as if nothing is wrong, guess what? That pain will disappear because... Whatever you give attention to will give you direction. So don't give that pain direction. Don't give those thoughts, those fiery darts, those words of the enemy, those strategies that he has fired into your mind to stop you from getting your miracles. Don't give it any thoughts. Don't believe it either. And before you know it, <laughs> your reality will be opposite of what the enemy wants from you. <laughs> I need to be fast, I need to be fast. Uh, uh, this video is getting longer than expected. Now, back to faith. You know, in Habakkuk 2 verse 4, the Bible said, The just shall live by his faith. And Paul quoted this same scripture in the New Testament three times. You know, he quoted it in Romans 1 verse 17, um, Hebrews 10 verse 38, and in Galatians chapter 3. He quoted it three times, and one pronoun, a personal pronoun was missing. And that pronoun is his. He quoted it three times, and how he quoted it, you will see that he said, The just shall live by faith. No longer the just shall live by his faith, but the just shall live by faith. That behoves us to actually look at that. I mean, for the fact it was quoted three times, means and establishes that it wasn't a mistake. That means it was done on purpose, and God ensured it was recorded three times. Remember our two or three witnesses upon which a matter is um, established? Yeah. So it is not a mistake. I like the one he quoted in Galatians 3 verse 11. See, but no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, but that it is evident that the just shall live by faith. No longer his faith. And that is Galatians 3 verse 11. A chapter before then, remember, it is men that split the Bible into chapters. So, before he said this, he said something in chapter 2, verse 20. The Bible was put in chapters and verses for easy reference. So, you can, when I say chapter 2, verse 20, you can easily find it in your own text. See what he said in chapter 2, verse 20. Paul said in Galatians 2, verse 20, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Said nevertheless, I live. He said, Not I, but Christ lives in me. He now said, But the life I now live, I live with the faith of Jesus Christ. So when you get born again, when you put on Christ, when you're baptized into Christ, you are given, you are imputed with the faith of Jesus Christ. So, you no longer, as a righteous person, as the just man, live by your faith or with your faith. You are now living this new life by the faith of Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? In verse 22 and verse 23, that the scripture has concluded that all have sinned that are under the law, 
that the faith of Jesus might come to us that believe. He said that the law was just a schoolmaster to bring us to this reality, this New Testament, this new covenant of faith in Jesus Christ. And after he said all that, he now said, when you believe in Jesus Christ, when this faith has come, that we are no longer under the law as a schoolmaster, that we are now the children of God by the faith in Jesus Christ. Then I love verse 27. For as many that have been baptized with Christ has put on Christ. Isn't that awesome? Then Paul speaking again in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. He said, For if you have put on Christ, you are one spirit with Christ. So let's go back to Galatians 2 verse 27. For as many that are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Then in Corinthians chapter 6, he said, For as many have put on Christ, you are now one spirit with Christ. How do you how were you baptized into Jesus Christ? By just believing in his death and resurrection and confessing with your mouth that he's Lord. And the Bible says that you're now born again. You're now a believer. So when you become a believer, you are baptized into Christ. This is, is this baptism into Christ that we signify with water baptism. If you've been baptized into Christ, you've put on Christ, then you're one spirit with Christ. You now begin to understand why the righteousness of God was imputed to you. Then if you understand that, then you should also know that God's faith has been given to you. It's exactly what Jesus was trying to communicate to his disciples when he told them this. He told them in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, have the faith of God. That's the original text. Have the faith of God. So the whole story about the fig tree was just to talk to the disciples and introduce them to the faith of God, which was promised. To us, which is exactly what uh, the New Testament is all about. That faith of Jesus Christ is what has been given to each and every one of us. Why am I talking about this in detail? So you understand that you don't need to struggle with faith. You already have it. The Bible says that he has given to each one the measure of faith. You don't have a measure of faith. You have the measure and the faith of Christ, the faith of God that you have as a believer is the right, is the appropriate measure that can deliver to you anything that you require from God. And you need to take it up as a shield to do what? Put away the fiery thoughts from the enemy that tries to stagnate you. There are scriptures that talk about um, um, us having the faith of Jesus Christ, like James chapter 2, verse 1 and all that. I won't go into that. I'll just show the scriptures as you scroll on there. And 1 John 5, verse 4 says something. The Bible says that, he said that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. He said, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Our faith is that victory that has overcome the world. Our faith is what puts every single one of Satan's wiles that to flight. That we need to appropriate it. We need to use the shield. The Roman army has this battle strategy they call the Testudo. Or the tortoise, where they use their their shields as a defense against me artillery attack, maybe mortar attack. Um, mortar is the name we use today, but those days they have um, catapults. They used to fire some arrows that can spares that can kill um, a couple of soldiers at the same time, and all that, or maybe archers from a tower or from the wall of a city they want to attack so they form a tortoise where those in front have their shields put together and you know, they send to each other those behind put their shields as a roof so they form a tortoise and the soldiers hide under 
this um, enclosure and they are protected from the attack from the enemy and that tells us something you know we no longer live by our faith we live by the faith of jesus christ which we require in our personal battles that we face as we go on in life remember the trying of your faith work at patience that being said i also says that if two agree upon a matter on earth it will be established now when it comes to the body of christ and maybe that you've tried using your faith or you've tried standing but you need help that is why we are a family we are a body no but no part of the body can survive outside the body no part of the body can survive alone so you reach out to your brother you reach out to your sister say stand with me in faith that is you are forming a tortoise right now that can withstand the barrage from the enemy so it's something that we need to do a whole lot as believers and yeah, that's why peter said in 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 first peter 5 verse 9 that we should resist the enemy steadfastly in faith and all that we should help our brothers we should also stand against him using our shield of faith timothy also talked about uh this to that paul right to timothy where he told him that he should fight the fight of faith the fight of faith is not a fight to get more faith no the fight of faith is the fight to ward off the fiery path of the enemy. Is to put down the wiles of the enemy. Any knowledge that have exalted itself against the knowledge of God, any thought that have exalted itself against the knowledge of God, we need to put it down. That is the fight of faith. You don't fight to get faith. You fight with faith to resist the enemy. The Bible also talks about uh, we should not be slothful, but we should be followers of those who through faith and patience did what? Inherited the promises. So some of the things I want to leave with, with as I end this episode. And finally, the Bible says, hold fast to your confession, which has a great recompense of the word. What profession, what confession? I said is the confession of faith without wavering. Hold fast to your faith confession, to your faith profession without wavering. Don't budge. Stand your ground. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. And I'm going to end with this. The Bible says in Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7. So as you have received Jesus Christ our Lord, walk in him, be rooted, be built up in him, be established in faith as ye have been taught, abounding in thanksgiving. I'm going to see in the next one. I know the next one is supposed to be um, the helmet of salvation. But I'm going to put that to the last. We're going to talk about the sword of the spirit. So join me next time. God bless you.